So how to pass the AWS exam in a weekend? Now I'm talking about the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, which basically offers a foundational understanding of AWS cloud concepts, AWS services, and terminology. So that's a great starting point for all of you in a non-technical role. So hey, if you're thinking of a career change or you want to get into the cloud, perfect. This is the starting point. So it gives you a great starting point if you are a non-technical person, right? With no prior IT or cloud experience. Or it is for those individuals with on-premise IT experience looking for basic AWS cloud fluency, right? So it serves both purposes. Now, this certification certainly gives you the confidence to tackle role-based AWS certifications such as AWS Certified Cloud Architect or Security Specialty and whatnot, right? But I'm going to tell you how to pass the AWS exam in a weekend because, hey, if you're busy working, you don't have time, make sure you watch the video till the end because I'm going to give you the steps, right? Concrete steps. You just need to follow those and boom, you'll be ready to pass the exam. So with that said. How do you pass this exam in a weekend? Here are the, the basic steps, right? So first, all you need to do is just go ahead, go online, create an AWS free tier account, right? So just go to the AWS, amazon.com, right? And just create a free tier account or just Google it, right? Easy, create an account, gives you about 750 hours a year of hands-on practice. So you have all the access to AWS services, tools for practice purposes, right? Perfect, so it's free. Now that you have it, next you need to watch the Networking Essentials and Cloud Computing courses right here on YouTube, right here at Claydesk channel, so that you get a basic understanding of networking concepts, right? Just at a high level. You don't need to become an expert, right? Just so that you get familiarized with the terminology. So both courses are here. You can look them up and then watch them, right? And as you watch them, make sure you take notes because notes are important, right? And just list out all the questions and then, of course, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer because I remain engaged with all of my students. So make sure you do that. So take these two courses. They're about three hours, six hours long, right? Because we're talking about a weekend, guys, right? So we have some time, right? So make sure you watch these. And of course, you understand uh, the basics of networking essentials and cloud computing, right? If you're absolutely new. If you have some experience, perfect. That's easy. All right, next step. Ensure that you're taking notes and maintain a list of all the questions and, of course, send them across because that's the best way if you have a question i'll be happy to provide a resource for example or answer the question right that clarifies a lot of things for you as you're learning all right next is important right so watch our free aws cloud practitioner course right here on youtube it's about three and a half hours not that long but it gives you nothing but hands-on with all the tools and services that AWS has. So once you, you already have an account created, right? Remember step one, you already have a free tier account created. So if you watch this course, it's gonna walk you through step-by-step step as to how to you know, navigate through the management console, how to take a look at various services, how to start using them, and so on. So make sure you watch this course and practice along with the course. Very important, right? So it's about three hours, like I said because it gives you the knowledge of core AWS services and use cases, such as billing, pricing models, security concepts, and how the cloud impacts you, know, you and the businesses, right? For example, is what's covered. And you need to understand the basic concept of usage of various AWS services, concepts, as well as application. And of course, the exam primarily simply validates a, the ability to complete for example, explain the value of the AWS cloud, which again, all is covered in the course, but I'm just highlighting the key important areas here. Understand and explain the AWS shared responsibility model, which is important. Understand security best practices, AWS cloud costs, billing, economics, and different billing practices, right? And of course, describe the position, the core AWS services, including compute, network, database, and storage. These are the four key, right? Like I said, compute, network, databases, and security. So not only understand them, but also 
uh, apply, right? Do some projects. And of course, like I said, the course covers it, right? So you just have to follow along as uh, you know, we teach hands-on. And then of course, next step is, like I said, practice hands-on along with the course and repeat watching the course. So once you go through it, there will be many things that are absolutely new to you. Like I said, maintain a list of notes, ask questions, and then go back to the course again. Do it again, okay? So it's three hours plus three hours. And of course, it may take you a little longer because you're pausing and then you're doing the hands-on, right? But do it again so that you go through the flow one more time. And again, you need to ensure that you have the following knowledge, right? AWS concepts will be done, security and compliance within the AWS cloud, understand the AWS core services, and the economics of AWS cloud, right? What that's all about. All right, so now that you've spent about a day, right? Or maybe even day and a half, something like that, right? Then you're ready to uh, jump into the practice exams, okay? Because you need to know that what multiple choice formats, how does the exam look like, what kind of questions come in the exam, so it's multiple choice uh, primarily, and then of course, um, choose the best answer, right? Some these are the, and there's about 700 is the passing score out of 1,000. So you have 70% chance of passing, which is not that bad. And I'm, I'm gonna show you the, the breakdown of different domain knowledge also, so you understand which percentage covers which domain knowledge within the exam itself. All right, so take the practice exams and how, where do you go and take the practice exam? Just go to blog.claydash.com and just find um, the resources. You can download them and then boom, you're ready to go. We have full practice exams right there. All right, so here's the good part, okay? I know there's always a good part, right? What's not covered in the exam? So, you know, apart from, you know, uh, trying to study everything, you don't need to do that. I'm going to give you a list now of what is not covered. That's pretty cool, okay? So, what's not covered? Number one on the list is coding. You don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to code. You don't need to be able to have the knowledge of Java, Python, or any other uh, programming concepts. How good is that, right? So, no coding questions are on the exam. No questions regarding designing cloud architecture. So they're not testing you to, as if you were a cloud architect. They just want to know the basics or, or the ability of you to have the basic knowledge of AWS services, right? Like I mentioned earlier. So you don't need to study cloud architecture. You don't need to study troubleshooting, okay? They're not gonna ask you about uh, bugs, right, or how to find or how to find a solution of a certain problem. So you're not going to be tested on troubleshooting. You're not going to be tested on implementation either, right? Just the mere concepts and, of course, the understanding of those services. So they're not going to ask you about implementing uh, these services in depth, right? They're not going to ask you about migration. There will be no questions on, on the exam. Um, which is out of the scope of the exam, right? That, that's what we're talking about here, is migration. So from on-premise to cloud, for example, how do you migrate your databases, how do you migrate your um, data itself? So no questions on that either. And then of course, no questions on load and performance testing because that's in depth. So you're not gonna be asked on those either, right? And finally, what's covered out of scope is business applications are out of scope, for example, Amazon Alexa, Amazon Chime, Amazon Workmail. So all these different services that I just mentioned are not, you know, are part of the exam. So you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to be, you know, ask any questions regarding these particular services. Okay. Now let me give you the breakdown, the domain knowledge. So domain one is cloud concepts. That's twenty six percent of the exam itself. Nothing but cloud concepts, which is fairly easy. Like I said, if you're doing this in a weekend, hey. If you follow these steps, you will have this pinned down. So cloud concepts is 26%. Domain two is security and compliance, which is about 25%, okay? Once again, no implementation, no coding questions, no designing architecture questions, none of that, right? It's just the concept, like shared, uh, shared responsibility model, uh, maybe AWS Route 53 concepts, right? Those things that you need to study regarding security and compliance. Domain three is technology itself in general. How does the AWS cloud works? What are the applications, right? That's about 33%, which is again, pretty much all conceptual, okay? 
So, and finally, domain four is billing and pricing. It's only 16%. So there'll be about you know, five questions or 10 questions, uh, something like that, maybe, or even more on billing and pricing. So here you go. What do you need to do if you want to pass this exam in a weekend? You need to focus on domain three or domain one, two, and three primarily, and of course, four. You're going to cover all four domain areas. But even if you have, you know, if, if you're not too fluent with, let's say, one of the domains, it's not that bad because the passing score is 700 out of 1,000. So if you score more than 70%, you pass. And passing this exam simply validates the fact that, hey, you have a pretty solid concept of AWS cloud infrastructure, okay, and the various services. So that's not too bad, okay? So there you go. I wanted to kind of talk about how to pass the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam in a weekend. So if you're busy, no problem. Take the time out, take the weekend, get yourself disciplined, follow the steps that I just mentioned, and boom. And you can take this exam at home also. You don't have to go to a testing center. You can uh, schedule this exam right here you know, at your house, and then you can pass it, right? So let me know if you have any questions. Comment down below for sure. As you take notes, throw them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And I want to make sure that you get the best of the best learning abilities. And of course, hands-on, 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 guys. That's what you do. So take this course, practice along with the course, and boom, you'll be ready. Thanks for watching. My name is Syed, and I'll see you next time.